Princess Diana secretly collaborated on a biography that shed light on her marriage to Prince Charles in devastating detail, but the Princess of Wales lied to Prince Philip and the Queen's staff about her involvement, according to a royal expert. Princess Diana and Prince Charles married in their spectacular 1981 royal wedding. However, the parents of Prince William and Prince Harry were a no-matched pair and they had separated by 1992. That year, their impending separation was heralded by the bombshell book Diana, Her True Story, which sensationally revealed how unhappy Diana was in her marriage. Although it was revealed after the princess's death that she had in fact collaborated with author Andrew Morton on the biography, Diana lied to Prince Philip about her involvement at the time, according to another royal biographer. Author Penny Jr., in her 2005 book The Firm, writes, Robert Fellows, treading difficult ground, not for the first or last time, as both Diana's brother-in-law and the Queen's private secretary, asked Diana if she had had anything to do with the book. Diana swore she hadn't and Fellows believed her. The Duke of Edinburgh also challenged her and again she denied it, lying, as it turned out, in both cases. Diana would go on to ask the Queen and Prince Philip for a trial separation that summer, and this was followed by the Prince and Princess of Wales' acrimonious 1996 divorce. Ems Jr. also reveals how she inadvertently had a surprising hand in provoking Diana's unprecedented book collaboration. She writes, Andrew Morton wrote a riveting book the like of which has never been seen before or since. He once told me that he was able to write Diana, her true story in 1992 because of one I had written the previous year which had incensed Diana. That book was Charles and Diana, Portrait of a Marriage and and I had said that the marriage was not a happy one for a multitude of reasons, something I had first mentioned in a biography of Charles four years earlier. They were leading largely separate lives with separate friends, which was sad, but that it was a successful working partnership nonetheless. He called it a sensitive account of a working partnership which judged the marriage was, in those terms, actually very healthy – a conclusion which, pre-Morton, did not seem so far from the truth as it would with the benefit of hindsight. What incensed Diana was the suggestion that, ten years into her marriage, she was happy with this situation and she set out to tell the world what her life was really like. Journalist Andrew Morton had befriended the Princess of Wales' friend Dr. James Colthurst, who Diana used as a go-between to give Mr. Morton cassette tapes she had recorded during the summer and autumn of 1991. Ems Jr. describes how the book talked about the Prince's shortcomings as a father and the loneliness and isolation Diana had felt for so many years, trapped in a loveless marriage in a hostile court made worse by a cold and disapproving royal family. It would be another shocking media collaboration, in 1995, that would similarly herald Diana and Charles' divorce. Diana recorded her panorama interview secretly at Kensington Palace with BBC interviewer Martin Bashir, and caused a sensation when she revealed how her marriage had failed and how she harbored doubts about Prince Charles' fitness to become king. It is still remembered today for the moment when the princess said, there were three of us in this marriage, so it was a bit crowded. Ems Jr., in her 2017 Camilla biography The Duchess, writes, the queen finally lost her patience. This public mudslinging wasn't just harming the monarchy, it was damaging for the young princes, William and Harry. After consulting with the Prime Minister and the Archbishop of Canterbury, she wrote formally and privately to her son and daughter-in-law asking them to put the country out of its uncertainty and to divorce as early as possible. The Queen read the riot act to both Charles and Diana and Sarah Ferguson and Prince Andrew, urging them to divorce during the meeting over Christmas at Sandringham in 1995.